Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rainy and Black podcast. This is a podcast where we're delayed for months. And- <laughs> it has been a while. I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. This is a podcast where we talk about Rainy and Black and all things Massiverse. As you know, there's been a few delays, so this is the first issue we've gotten in three, almost four months. But obviously, we're super excited to talk about uh, it. I'm your host, Post Office Bash, and I'm joined by my friends and my fellow Radiant co-hosts, Radiant Matt Point Five, the Catalyst Protocol Charlie, and Zero Zero Firefly. I guess that's how I'm going to interpret those letters. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Good. Uh, it's been a wild day, one of the wildest days in the Massiverse, to be sure. Um, but uh, we're talking through. We finally got new issues, so uh, it's going to be a good one. So let's get into it. Uh, what about you, Ali? Yeah, it's been a long day. Um, it was a, it was an adventure trying to get this issue. But I'm glad I finally got it. It was uh, pretty good. Excited to talk about it with you guys. How about you, Charlie? Yeah, I'm uh, doing well. I'm still a little stuffy somehow. I don't know. I've been sick for like a, a week here. Unfortunately, missed uh, last week's uh, Rogue Sun 16. Um, fantastic issue, just want to say, first off, probably. Oh, yeah. I know we said probably the best issue of the series so far, so... <laughs> just incredible um was oh yeah i was playing spider-man all weekend um i i know uh yeah mario wonder came out too for uh, all the switch heads out there so yeah i have uh lots of content for everyone and mm. uh yeah really really excited to finally get this book back uh today and uh yeah we we learned some awesome stuff into it and can't wait to dive into it really um how are you bash or post office bash <laughs> This is post office jurisdiction now, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, <laughs> we're doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks. Yeah, Spider Man 2 has been so much fun. Everyone's been playing it. It's been a blast to see, uh, you know, everyone just enjoying it. And it's also been such a good game. I couldn't yeah, recommend hell it yeah. enough. Hell yeah. yeah um, feels so good to be back on talking about Radiant Black because, like, you guys know, we've been. We've been just as anxious as others, and I know we've been delayed with a few things like the newsletter, which is my fault, so I'll take responsibility for that, and um, the fan cast, but you just so much, everyone's been so busy, people have been sick, been struggling to find the time, and now all the series just suddenly return together, so good news, we're caught up on Rogue Sun, check that out over at the Rogue Sun podcast, where these radiant gentlemen here turn fiery rogues, and we talk about all things supernatural in the Massiverse. But uh, today we're going to talk about all things cosmic in the Massiverse because we've got Radiant Black 26 and 26.5. But before we get into that, I just want to ask you guys, because Matt brought this up just a little bit earlier, how was your experience trying to get this book? Did you guys struggle getting it? Do you have some issues with your LCSs? Like what was the experience like? Did you pick it up digitally? Just curious. Um, well, for me, I uh, I went Comixology. Uh, I don't have it on my pull list in my LCS. I usually get it from uh, another distributor because it's kind of quicker and easier to get it that way. But um, yeah, I went with Comixology and I had to make two separate accounts. Uh, I had to make an extra, an additional account to my current existing Amazon account, one with the US and one in Canada because the Canadian Amaz- uh, Comixology had part, part uh, 0.5 and the other one was on the US one. So it it was a pain to get and I feel like I'm not alone. That's wild. Um, I'll, I'll go quick. Um, yeah, my my mine was actually uh pr- pretty simple. I I don't know. Yeah, it could be the Ontario. I know. Um, you you've had um with a couple issues have problems getting it on Comicsology. Always, we you know a lot a lot of people have problems. Um, but I I seem to get it okay. Um, here. So yeah, I I got it. Um, kind of right right last night when it came out. Um, so yeah, I got it. Was able to read it and uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. How about you, Ali? Uh, it's been a little, a little crazy for me. I went to, I went to my regular LCS to just get all my new books for the week. Uh, they just didn't get it. They didn't get either copy. Uh, I went to a different LCS. They didn't get any copies either. And then I called two more, and neither of them had either copy again. So I was kind of just like a little bit frustrated that I had to like check four places. Um, but I'll, the the common theme was none of them even got the book, right? So um, wow. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of upsetting. So I ended up um, getting it online. We were talking about how, like, behind the scenes, about how I, even though Michael came up, or I don't know who 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 it was, suggested they do the point fives, which I think is like a pretty good solution, all things considered. But I think for the retailers, like the general retailers, just because there's just so many different retailers, they might have been a little confused, and so their orders might have reflected that. 
I've also heard things like um, from fellow friends who are retailers or who are store owners saying that, you know, because it was constantly delayed, that Diamond might have like, you know, forgot to re-upload it or something as a separate book. And so that might have led to less orders and confusion, which is like something like we've experienced. Obviously, this is somewhat speculation, but I think it's it's in the right direction because it seems plausible given, you know, the outcome, given how we struggled, because I was the same way in my store. We only had 26.5 and I couldn't get 26. And um, we I was told that they, even on their invoice from uh, from the distributor, that they didn't have 26 on there, even though it was ordered. So obviously there's some debacle there and we're gonna get that sorted. Like, you know, in the next week, I, they were told that they were getting copies in and I was told I'm gonna get my 26, but just to read it in time for this review, I had to get the 26 digitally. So, that's concerning. I've also heard a lot of people say that their stores just didn't get any copies. Like on, we go to social media, seeing on some people on Twitter, seeing some people on Instagram saying their stores just got zero copies. I've seen others like my friend who's also a retailer said he got both copies fine. So it, it might have been some of the delays. It might have been something like that. But who knows? But I think as far as like communicating to the readers that they have to read both copies, I think the readership, at least in terms of the discord, in terms of social media, seems to understand that for the most part, yeah. which is good. I want to I want to add to real quick that I got the same response from all four LCSs, which is their biggest issue was the the change the I image leaving Diamond and switching to to Lunar that messed up a lot of their copies because it wasn't just image books that were missing it was also uh, boom. Hmm. It's kind of a perfect storm and like Bash and I go to the same LCS. He was there earlier and I called him like, "Do you guys have Radiant Black uh, 26 and 26.5?" And they were like. Their response was like, radar what? Like they, they didn't even know about the title. <laughs> and like, I, yeah, and I get it. I know that it's not in the store shelves all the time. Like a lot of places don't carry it other than for people that put it on their pull list, which means it's more important than ever to have it on your pull list if you don't. Because honestly, we joke and we keep things light, but I am really worried about the future of the series if we have three more issues coming out like this and distributors don't know what to do. Like luckily this was a learning curve, hopefully, and people will be more prepared next time knowing that this isn't, you know, when you swing for the fences, sometimes people have no idea how to catch the home runs and stuff. They fly over the fence. So yeah. it's it can be difficult and I'm hoping it's much more smooth next time. And I don't wanna I don't wanna crap on these guys because they put it the yeah. book is great. The quality yeah. of the book itself is still like on par and amazing. And it you know, no we know they're no. they're trying their ass off to make this thing work too, right? Yeah, for sure. Like mm -hmm. yeah, no, they're they're definitely trying to make it work. And and I thought I thought it was interesting too. Like it's it's so like widespread all over the place. We kind of we we put it in our Discord too, kind of just, just like a curiosity sake thing. Um, we we saw kind of people on Twitter knock at their books. Um, so we just kind of put it in the Discord to see kind of who got their books, um, who didn't, and we actually saw like. Um, so there was like 22 uh, votes and 14, 14 people got both copies, but eight, eight people. So um, a, li a little under half um, either like only got one or didn't get any of them or um, like, yeah. So I and and I thought it was interesting, too. There's two people in here. One person only bought Radiant Black 26 and one person only bought radiant black 26.5 so i don't know if we have some hardcore marshall or nathan fans out there <laughs> only only going that one way or or what but yeah no i i just thought that was um pretty interesting there they could be like yeah, soldiers I, on islands that didn't know world war ii <laughs> ended and they're still fighting, fighting. <laughs> yeah yeah for sure but yeah i i, I just yeah i hope it, it they they definitely uh kind of get it going more smooth going forward for sure yeah, check out our poll. We have it in Discord, and we're gonna do one on YouTube. So, or if if they allow us to, and because I'm not sure how that works, but we should we should be good there, and we'll put one on the the Podbean. So, if you're using the uh, podcast, please check out the poll. Let us know what you thought, and if the polls for whatever reason don't work, then just message us on you know any social media. We'd love it's to hear even, what happened. It's even tougher to make poll options for this. It's like the whole thing so difficult even <laughs> to make. Like it could be like four options. Sorry, okay, I want this cover, and didn't get this. Like, it's difficult. So many, to, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's so silly. before we start the issue review, I just wanted to point out the image solicits came out recently. And as you can see here, we were one of the first to break the news, if not the first. Obviously, we always got the news out. Check out this gorgeous cover A on the left and cover B. And they formed to make this just gorgeous connecting cover, guys. Holy shit. Um, that's Radiant Black 29 and 29.5. That's the most recent solicited issue. Hopefully, they don't get delayed, but. I'm not entirely sure, guys. We we don't know. It's been a lot. I'm looking really forward to reading those to my children and my wife. 
<laughs> okay. It'll be like Wendell, you know, in the future. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, no. Exciting stuff. What did you guys think of these covers? And are you hyped? Hard not to be. Dude, yeah, mm. honestly, like, for, for all these, uh, like, I, I like to take quick looks at them. But I, I, I don't know. For, for me, I, I, I just like to always kind of get, get there when I get there um kind of mm. thing but um yeah no just like the the, the design of premiere since we've seen that more uh, obviously um him displayed across that cover yeah just look looks absolutely great um and, and did, like do they actually like did they release like a solicit like um kind of like a i don't know like a little solicit of this issue like a little bl blurb oh yeah, yeah 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 they did oh, okay. I, I could pull it up in a second here okay. but yeah so they released the solicit for this issue and it's it's looking good guys it's looking good it looks like it's it more good. about the choices they're gonna have to make i'll pull it up here in a second looks so, yeah, like marcello's says... doing all the covers it looks like, oh yeah right? oh yeah oh yeah and they're gorgeous eh yeah oh, i, I think that might be my favorite one out of canada yeah. store so far yeah they, they... i agree i and they've all been fantastic guys so um it says the catalyst war continues things go too far not nathan and marshall make their choices and outside force enters the game oh shit! possible first appearance or um who knows who knows Oh, you muted, man. Yeah, I did, uh, it was a shitty joke, but I'm going to double down. Like, obviously, Invincible is <laughs> doing the fight in that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but we don't know. It'd be cool. Uh, obviously, uh, Kitty Kitty is uh, joining the battle. <laughs> no, but if we got Kitty Kitty in this. Uh, Imagine. I, uh, hopefully, I don't have to. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the shade against the kitties there. Let's oh, get started on this issue. No shade. No, no, shade, no shade against the kitties over here. Right, true, Pure true, sunlight true. for that kitty oh, kitty to lie in for hours. No, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So the way we're going to be doing this issue, ladies and gentlemen, is that we're going to be reviewing the first in the order, as you can see. Oh, is this part two? What the fuck? I thought it was. Oh, yeah, part two <laughs> because of um, after 25. Okay. So, th yeah. So as you can see, yeah. part two, we're doing number 26A, which is each 26. Me, here's the ultimate nitpick. Technically, shouldn't. 25 b be part two as well because it has a different ending right so technically this should be part three if we're really going to get into the weeds i can see why uh, yeah, that's yeah. true yeah but yeah i don't know i i do like that they added the catalyst war banner on top to help mm -hmm. other to help other people to see that there's different parts but i feel like the average person on the shelf that needs the help the most is the most likely to overlook it mm -hmm. anyways yeah so we got a creative team of, or the title of the book is The Protocol. We've got a creative team of Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark doing the writing duo duties. Penciler Eduardo Farigato on 26 and Marcel Costa on 26.5. And we've got Raul Angelo as the colorist, letter Becca Carey, ex, uh, letter extraordinaire. And of course, editor and designer Michael Basuto with a really nice special thanks credit to Ryan Sedoti, who's been mentioned in a few of the books recently. So shout out to Ryan Sedoti of the Invincible Podcast and Circle Guy News, uh, just a fellow friend and an awesome guy. Really cool to see him get credit. But uh, yeah, what if they be like in the book and credited in the book for helping make the book, right? Mm. <laughs> Other than, like Michael's technically made a cameo and stuff, but yeah. Anyways, that's just nerd shit. Yeah, um, what a page to open the book. I mean, we love these pages. I think just before we started, Charlie and Matt were talking about how clean this page looks and how yeah, like really at least in terms of the delays we got to have some time to really refine the art and everything looks incredible. So yeah, what a page to open up on the book. And as we can see in the next page, and these are, you know, both pages on the side. So these two pages right here, we can see that shit's going down on earth. This is the invasion that was foresaw, foreseen in, uh, in, in Supermassive, if you remember, or in one of the visions where Marshall's looking down and everything's burning. It kind of looks like it's totally coming into play now because as you can see, it's everything's on fire. Uh, they're being attacked. Zero, zero, 001 is loose, and they're formulating a plan. And I want to say that we've seen this in advance in terms of the previews and the newsletter. But as you can see in the Nathan in the Marshall issue, which is twenty six, is all the regular issues are going to be Marshall, and then the point fives are all going to be the, the what happens if Nathan chose uh, if Nathan became Rainbow Black. So in the Marshall version, as you can see, he actually takes Nathan with him right away. And we've seen through PVs in the newsletter that in the Nathan version, Nathan goes on his own. So immediately, I thought that was a cool distinction. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's really you wouldn't expect it, right? You think Nathan would be the, the one to bring around Marshall instead of vice versa, right? And I thought this was a this I was really interested in what Nathan was doing specifically the most in these two issues. Although I'm always seeing what Marshall's up to. Yeah. Yeah, and we we actually um zero zero one here, um right right out of the gates like the, yeah i f- first of all i love the design of those u ships like they got like all, all the ship kind of shapes and stuff yeah they they, mm. they do look really cool um i i do wish like just because i i love his um i love the way they do like scale and like the big robots and stuff i wish we could have seen that big ass ship um, mm. somewhere a, a little a little bit more um but yeah no that does look does look really neat and yeah we find out literally right away that um premier's here to challenge radiant black kind of one-on-one um and put him through this catalyst protocol for the new way um and that really kind of just yeah sets the stage for this whole whole catalyst war um really um did, did, did you guys kind of expect to like get this get this right here like kind of learn this here um i was kind of um kind of skipping a couple pages but i i was a little surprised seeing premiere this early um personally like i, I just thought it was a little quick quick like we saw him tease last issue a little bit um it was it was a dope ass intro don't, don't get me wrong it was, it was it was super badass um but but i i just thought kind of how we go from the ground to the ship into premiere I, I i thought it was a i thought it was a little quick um for me um but yeah what, what do you guys think of this whole uh, combat one-on-one uh, challenge. I just, I, I didn't expect to see him this early, or I didn't expect him to meet Radiant Black this early. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah. there might be like a little bit more, I guess, like grunts in between uh, to get to him. But like after reading the whole issue, I kind of get it. I kind of get yeah. why they went that way. It makes sense. Oh, but that yeah. challenge, that whole challenge thing, is pretty interesting. You know, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see what the next challenges will be. I like the tension in the air as well. Like it was pretty tense. Mm. Yeah, I like the yeah. It's like a you know a nerd talking to his parents. They don't understand what he's saying because he's talking in the code <laughs> yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. But I, I structurally it makes sense to why they're doing this, right? Because it's the issues start off the mo- like very similar. Both issues kind of mirror each other the most, and then they they uh, divulge later on. But he's like introducing them. They, he's uh, saying he's asking which one of them threw their name in the goblet of fire. Basically, I, I'm thinking of Harry Potter four a lot in this because it looks like we're going to be getting challenges in each yeah. of these issues or at least for the next this one and the next one it looks like where we're seeing how the radiant black reacts like i didn't think that's how they were going to do this so that's almost like ender's game or something to see if you're the best to handle this so i thought it was clever and premier looks pimp like we can't understate that like yes. he looks dope yes. as hell yes did you guys notice this so ooh. so i gotta zoom in here oh right here when the identified glitches you see here it's red and then here it's yellow yeah and those are some of the colors of radiant black because the blue is already the blue and black is already oh, right i don't know right, if that's cool. like intentional or not but i thought that was really cool i thought like, maybe this is a hint. no yeah, that's good thought, he could have all force power sets right potentially right that's catch. what i think immediately i like how when he comes out of that door you could see the lines of robots behind him Oh my god, the, the yeah. zoom is uh, the whole ass you, army. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's really cool stuff. Amazing page. Sorry, I was getting a bunch of messages. Really cool stuff. Ama- amazing uh page. Uh, my only thing is like okay, so like Charlie said, it's a little bit early, I agree. And then in the next page, it's like I thought this was super badass because I just felt like, okay, this is a little bit impulsive in terms of like, I can't tell if I like, I've never really understood what's going on in terms of the arms coming out of their chest, because is it like the catalyst or the, sorry, is the colossal interfering or something? Because when Radiant Black, when it happened to him early on in the series, it was kind of beyond his control. We don't know if like he actually mm-hmm. did it or if it's just like the robot intervened, which was how I interpreted it. Mm-hmm. So here I thought it was particularly interesting that one of the first um, things that happens is the robot like comes out of premier and it makes me think just the way it's talking is premier being wielded as a vessel by that like colossal Ooh. is that like a rogue colossal do you know what i mean Ooh. yeah because like because like it comes out like there's no like it's immediately like computing it's interpreting what's happening very brainiac-esque and then immediately the thing just comes out and it's like there's no like leap in, in well, whatever between that i think 
I think it's kind of like what you said, but I think I don't. Maybe maybe it and Premier are more like kind of symbiotic in their relationship. Like they're more one entity rather than two, rather than like the, the colossal and radiant black Marshall. You know what I mean? Because he he starts saying something and then he says execute, and that's when the when the colossal starts coming out of him. Like they sync the most of anyone, right? Like right, right, right. Like they're a hundred percent synced. Yeah. yeah, I like either no, of those that, ideas. Yeah, that's okay. interesting. I no, I was wondering, like, yeah, no, I, like at first, like just hearing him talk in this in this weird um, kind of text, like I, I was kind of thinking, like, oh, is this guy even human? Like, is he alien? Was he just built by these robots? Like, is he mm-hmm. an entity? But yeah, no, I I think that's probably the best. Like he, yeah, he kind of took him over, um, and he's kind of that but yeah i i, I wonder I, I think that could kind of go back to is he from our future and could be a character we it's like you know we like know the white entity you with that with yeah. dead man you know like yeah. the entity with yeah, dead man yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, you're my yeah, bitch yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, like like i'll let you do what i permit you to do <laughs> it's like but yeah. it's just like for me it's more the dialogue it's just like it says non-compliance unauthorized user user master required execute it just seems like more of a program it was like interpreting not program, but more like an intelligence. Like he was interpreting, mm-hmm. analyzing, and then made a decision right. based on like the analysis and the data available. I thought it was interesting, but this the visuals, of course, are nothing short of extraordinary. Like we've talked about uh, the colorist Raul Angelo and how every time he comes into the book, he adds his own dynamic, his own beauty to the book, and that's you know he's he's in the caliber up there with all the incredible massive verse colorists. But man, Eduardo Ferragato is just killing it this issue. I mean. All these pages are memorable, eh? Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. The robot, like uh, Premier's robot, looks amazing. I, th- your theory is just really cool about that the robot's controlling them because I think more of Wendell how it's so involved with machines itself, right? And that the, the takeover. So, I don't know. There's something that sticks with me about that. I think that's a really sweet theory, and the art, of course, is amazing in both these issues. You can tell they're not rushed. Like they took their time. They knew this the sets that they had to draw, and they landed everything. Like it's like Iron Giant. Uh, bash at something about the view, the angle off air, and uh, <laughs> hey man, nothing like a crotch point of view to make you appreciate just how small you really are. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, no, I, 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 yeah, no, it's kind of a, it's kind of funny, but I, I love, I just love like how they can just always make like things like look how like they're on such a huge scale, um, for sure, and. Yeah, that that premier lo- robot definitely doesn't look like uh, mm. someone anyone wants to mess with for sure. He looks, yeah, no, that, that Pr- premier and his premier has armor, right? Like all the other radiants are just wearing like a skin tight suit or whatever. But premier has like yeah, yeah, armor to oh, him. He's well, like a little... Do you think? Do you think those holes symbolize like different radiants, or are they just like the light that like both the colossals have? They're just on different locations. I guess uh, I'm gonna. Different. I'm gonna go with it's just it's just the light. That's just how it's designed. Yeah. I like how Kieran's so unfazed with all this. He doesn't oh, yeah. <laughs> He's drinking coffee. Yeah. He's like, whatever. He's drinking tea. It's post office jurisdiction, baby. It's yeah, I love it. Yeah. Tea. Like, only I do that. <laughs> like, it's amazing. No, yeah, so, he was ready for this. Yeah, this is very like Transformers-esque. I think one of you guys said that uh behind the scenes as well. It's a very Transformers-esque <laughs> image, and I really love that a lot. Oh, you good? The tea was the end of me. You just made it worse. You just made it worse. Yeah. Wait, is the point five? That's the point five in him. That's that's the point five of the. We made the wrong choice. You should have gone with cover eight. It's this is both office jurisdiction, baby. It's Kieran. It's him. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm assigning the blame to him. But um, that was funny. I, I so so I moved the page because I don't want to show every single page. Yeah, but we'll just right. say it, yeah, exactly. So we'll show some pages, but mm. we want you guys to obviously buy the book, support the book, buy the book, well, buy both books. books as well. Get both sides of the story, which we're covering today. But obviously, the fight escalates, and we find out that Radiant Black is actually being tested by Premier. And part of the test, like Matt said, it's in steps. And the first step is to survive the assault. And the assault consists of just an onslaught of these robots being launched at Earth, at uh, at the city, and they have to basically protect it. 
obviously I found this like dialogue really funny, like challenge one time interval 5.5 E plus 44 playing time counting. Like it's just like okay, it's literally doing computations and shit. I wonder but, uh, if he sounds robotic. Like if, if this is a an animated or live action, like how how does he sound? Right? Does he sound like a robot? He'll be like robot be, head be cool there. Hmm. You, you guys know where oh sorry, go ahead. I was wondering how much like influence like um Michael Basudel has on like the writing of Catalyst. Like, do you think Kyle like asked him like, hey, what's some like tech talk? Because I don't think Kyle knows like programming <laughs> stuff, right? I, so you're I, saying I, Kyle doesn't know. know what a plank time is. Kyle. Kyle, he just insulted you, bro. He's saying you don't know what a plank time is. You're gonna no, take no, he's that? a writer, he just knows stuff, man. That's true. Exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. that's the best. <laughs> the that. the that's, the, that's the best, that's the best possible answer you could have given. And if you that's don't true. understand that reference, ladies and gentlemen, shame on you. You right. gotta get cover B. <laughs> you gotta, gotta yeah. go understand this yeah. reference yeah there you go um i just want to say we've given we always give so much love to all the creators um on reading black and, and on all the massive verse books because we here we don't just care about uh writers or artists we care about colorists we care about our letterers and man shout out to becca carey for all the incredible lettering in this issue i mean beyond just the bubbles that are colored differently with highlights that are different to to really distinguish the characters when they're speaking and give them a presence in that way. But there's also that fading weirdness in the conversation in the bubbles of Premier that gives him this extra edge that makes him almost 001-like, but it gives us this impression that he's like, I don't know, like he's like smarter. <laughs> he's like, ah. you know what I mean? We've seen like the words glitching almost. Yeah, he's on a whole other level. Like this dude's like, his words are breaking planes and shit. Yeah, yeah. Becca's work has been really prominent throughout this series. This issue was like the Super Bowl, right? Where it's like it's everywhere. There's so many characters within different bubbles, and like with Catalyst, it builds on the story. Like it adds to our speculation. Like, is he being taken over with the way that it exists outside the bubble? Like, just really well done. Becca's killing it. I love the economic use of her of her letters and some of the of her like sound effect letters in some of these pages. Like, first of all, the panel layout and the composition is incredible in one of these pages. I don't want to like I said, I don't want to show every page, but you can see as the robots are shooting their beams at Marshall 001 and Nathan, who are like trying to maneuver their way out of this, the Bram 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 sound effects are like so well placed that they're not interrupting the flow of the artwork. They actually complement it in a very beautiful way. So it doesn't feel disruptive when you're reading. But sometimes I've seen uh, in other books, like just completely different unrelated comic books, where sometimes where the lettering isn't as great, you can see sometimes it, it disrupts the flow of the artwork because it's either too big or too small. It doesn't accentuate it enough. But I think here it's so fluid. It, like it works perfectly in, 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 in symphony with all the other aspects of the of the uh, visuals of the books. So really fantastic stuff. That's when you know like you have a top tier letter working for you. So yeah, it was like shout out to Becky Carey. Yeah, oh yeah. So, yeah, another fantastic page here. We got the escalation, of course, as the robots begin to make their, uh, uh, not begin, as the robots just start assaulting, literally. They're just, everyone's launching at them. And this is where 001, I think, we've seen the 001 of the past who's very cryptic. And though he's still a cryptic <laughs> bastard because that's just who, how he is, I think there's just definitely some more, like, straight up plain language in, in what he's saying because he's trying to tell them, okay, like, it's now or never. Like, this is the yeah. showtime. So, you don't even know what this friendship is yet, Nathan. We're homies yeah. now. I get Lord of the Rings vibes. Mm. Go for it. No, go so ahead, this go is ahead. the Catalyst protocol, right? Like I, I just want to yeah. shout out, like we've been yeah. asking what Catalyst is all this time. And some of us, I think, guessed in the right direction. I don't think anybody nailed it spot on, but we were like, it's it's this like terraforming thing of how they're going to test the new people and like shape, uh, either take them over or just like make them worthy yeah. or something. <laughs> it's like I, yeah. I think he just deletes them. Isn't that what, <laughs> what Zero One said? He just deletes them if they're not worthy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I, I think it is their whole thing. Like, I, I, I just went back to last issue because it's like I couldn't really remember. They said it, and it said like it says his first judgment for worlds not worthy of liberation, and it says worlds unable to pass the protocol. So I don't know if it's the protocol is just the initial, I guess, the initial attack and all that, or it's just the whole invasion. It's, I um, think it's the um, it's the, yeah. the the entirety of the challenges. However many just he ends, just everything. He yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I like it's that. I like that. the protocol for like crowning a new leader. Um, I I really like like this issue does make me think of Lord of the Rings a lot. Just like this like um, premiere kind of reminds me of Sauron. Just outside of like the way with all the robots, it kind of looked like Mount Doomish, and even just like uh, 001 working with Nathan with no powers is like trying to like escort Frodo like Legolas or something right like I just it's like a sci-fi Lord of the Rings and that's an amazing thing to be uh, you know to make me mm. think of and I don't know yeah. I, I just like it I just think it's neat I, 
Oh, yeah. Aside from being a fantastic event issue with tons of spectacle, I think the real strength in this issue is showcasing the difference of the main characters and what makes them unique in their own right. Absolutely. This is done expertly by writer Kyle Higgins, and of course the artists are uh, do an amazing job of conveying this visually, but I think Kyle Higgins really makes us understand between 26 and 26.5 the difference between Nathan and Marshall as a superhero, really. What their choices would mean, how they're shaped as individuals, and then how they how those uh, how that shaping informs like them as a superhero we see that i think one of the most interesting things for me and i'll share the screen right now is that we see that one of Im marshall's first impulses is to call um eva to the scene and obviously we'll see the play here in a second because they have to pick the battle zone right that's the first thing that's mentioned is that because of the assault they have to pick the battle zone it's going to be a very important thing in terms of saving lives and and not uh get, getting total destruction everywhere and i just want to say personally i think this is what we were talking about with payoff with things like rogue sun in terms of building story crumbs or development that really pay off later on we've seen that there's a budding friendship between eva and marshall throughout this entire series like he's always asked her for help and despite them having some sort of attitude between the two given their generational differences given you know she's young and impulsive i think there's a really endearing friendship between the two that's been forming and I think we see that more here because his first impulse, like we said, the first radiant that comes to mind when he needs help is pink and she comes in clutch. The plan here is to, I, I think, did you guys all feel like you understood exactly where he was going with the plan, which is like, yeah. I'm going to use her to teleport. Okay, cool. Yeah, because it's not the first time they did this. They did it a few issues ago with the big robot. It was just like, okay, pink, take him to the middle of the ocean. They, yeah. It's like they're, they're easy fix. She like to have that flash roll, like, yeah, just kind of get right, everyone yeah. to safety, you know. Just, That's a good yeah. point. Uh, it's yeah. like Bash said, though, we see the strengths of the characters. Marshall is really big in the network, and we've seen him get in right. with the bath bombs and the podcast boys, the Demon's Soul podcast boys, Circle Around News. And this is his strength, right? He knows what works to get, like, together, as we see Nathan's strengths in Part B. But I really like that. And Eva, this is one of her best tests of strengths. Like, she really, like, owned, she earned herself, like, a full, like, forest mm. of oranges really to recover here it's like this, this is good and it's nice really think, nice to see yeah. pink and uh, mm. costa style again yeah nathan has that like peter parker burden of like wanting to do it all on his own and really proving himself yeah. and not hurting anyone whereas like marshall i think it understands that there's strength in numbers and that he has friends that he can rely on and i think in their own ways both of those things are strengths and weaknesses but it's really cool mm. to see uh the juxtaposition between the two uh, I think, yeah, this page is really cool because you can also, I think the way they showcased in these three panels on the right, the evolution of basically the, sequ the, uh, the sequential evolution of Radiant Pink taking them from place to place. I think it's such a cool way to showcase her powers, like just a pink background. It's a very simple panels. They're not very different, but you understand exactly what's happening. It's actually very effective, very cool. And this would like be a very fun scene in a movie or a show if it happened. It'd be like, oh, very sudden, you know, so. I love this. I, love how the, I just love this. Hmm. I love how the baby stops crying at the end. Like when, once they're back to safety, the baby stops crying now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got like a like a highway strip of new pinkies, I think, after this. They're gonna have some new fans, new, <laughs> yeah. new followers on the stream for sure after this. Hmm. For sure. So yeah, um one thing that happens on the next page is obviously a radiant pink ends up teleporting all the people out of the street and into the middle of a farm. It's funny, uh, like just this random farm. Uh, I, I love that the shed in the farm is pink. Just a fun little, like, you know, <laughs> oh, like a little, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, so you can see Marshall is very concerned about Eva because she doesn't reply. She just seems like she just passes out and drops down. I was honestly very concerned. I thought this was a very effective storytelling from Kyle and the rest of the team, Kyle, Joe Clark, and everyone, because I'm genuinely concerned about Eva right now. We've already seen Kyle tease that there's going to be deaths and shit like that. He said, even said, like, are there going to be any Radiance left after this? I think we all love yeah. Eva here. And, like, after a play like that, we like her even more because it's just, like, she's always clutch. So I'm, like, genuinely concerned about her. Have we seen Marshall's hood in the bottom of that page where Nathan's looking and something? Like, it looks like a hood. Like, you can see the eyes. It's, I've never seen the mask go <laughs> yeah, up like that where it's like a hoodie. That's weird. That's it's pretty cool. Yeah. The eyes, like, back there. Yeah, it's like, it's, like, launched up. Holy shit. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even notice that. We got to have hoodies. Well, like, like blends in with around the corner. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. That's so cool. Holy shit, I didn't even realize that. That's so cool. <laughs> That's really like cool, that. though. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So that page, that, that page on the right, though, with all the robots just, just coming in full frontal assault, man. Eduardo Fargato is just slaying. And Raul Angelo with the gorgeous colors. I think he really showcased, like, 
uh, an amazing issue of, of like a, a full on battle issue because all the colors are perfectly fitting. They're all like oranges and reds. It's all destruction. Love the, the themes here. We need BB. Like BB's got to take control of one of these like, these mm. giant ass mechs. Oh, like yeah. I don't. If it doesn't happen, it'll be fine. But like, we need the Beebs. Hmm. The Beebs. Fuck yeah. yeah <laughs> definitely, de- definitely need the Beebs. And yeah, this, this robot. This yeah. This, this thing's an absolute tank. Uh, definitely wasn't expecting to see something this this freaking big. So yeah, that was. That was cool to see, and yeah, I was definitely a little worried uh, after seeing that for everyone. Um, but but yeah, I, I love, I think, like, definitely one of my favorite things about this issue, uh, like, the differences, obviously, like, with the emotion and stuff, but um, this one splash page we get, like, with with the, act, like, that action scene, like, kind of the, the two differences of those two, uh, both of them, they, yeah, were, were so well done. It's like the Taylor Nightwing run where you see the whole, like, in, you see the other progression yeah. of his movement throughout. Like, yeah. I love that. Stuff. Looks like he's like melting, like, he's like flying through a robot, he's like melting through it. And then, yeah, no, that's such that's incredible movie. stuff. I, I think yeah. this really showcases Eduardo Fregato's strengths as a storyboard uh, artist. Like, he really knows how to, you know, progress the yeah. story, even just on one or two pages, like on a splash page like that. You could see where everything's going through together. Yeah, you guys said it's like the night. Kind of like his Radiant Red thing. fight, right? Like, like he, mm. he would do that, too, with, the, like, the first ever fight. With mm-hmm. the, even, okay, yeah. this was for a gun. I got him. It's just the cover A with mm-hmm. Costa and cover A and B. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. My mistake. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, how, that's how good he is. His artwork is so good at even he can emulate Marcelo's style flawlessly while even making his own. Like, I could tell this was Arigato earlier on because he draws the faces with, like, a little bit yeah. more emotion, in my opinion. So you could tell, yeah. like, Mar- Marshall's face was very, like, oh, like, you could tell he was, you know, in the moment. This splash page, like the guy said, is gorgeous. I'm not going to show it because I want people to buy the book. But in the next page, it's funny because we see the very last thing that happens on this on this page of the splash page is that Radiant Black gets zapped out of the air, right? Because like even though he's kicking ass and taking names, there's just so many robots up in the sky. But yeah, we see the man with the freaking horn or whatever they're called, whatever those things are called, the microphone, and he's just like, "Can I get your attention? How about some help?" And we see Kieran coming in clutch because even though Marshall says, "I don't trust you," and I don't know if you're gonna do shit. You know, like, I need your help. And he says, okay. And he brings in all these ships. And we realize that not only are these ships badass because they're heavy artillery, they're actually powered by 001 weapons and tech. So Radiant Black is literally energizing all this technology as they make the like the, the assault against the people assaulting them. So Genius. it's really, yeah, it's exactly. It's like, a, like I was Gandalf pissed we didn't moment, think of this. Right? I was mm-hmm. pissed we didn't speculate on this, which is <laughs> good because they laid it out it there feels pretty, pretty obvious now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I love yeah. it. It's like whenever you see a Godzilla movie and they're just using regular weaponry, it's like, oh, whatever. But they actually <laughs> is it, saw it. Oh, is, is, is this the shit that's like the prophecy that's coming to life now that I think about it? Like the picture on the phone and like the, the city burning. Is this the shit like actually yeah. happening yeah. in real time? Oh, I, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Assume so. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I, I, I also found it super funny, like like to your point, kind of like the Godzilla, those ships kind of like, like they're still like kind of the old army green. Like they don't really mm-hmm. look very <laughs> futuristic. So I think Marshall mm-hmm. is kind of like bummed until they actually start shooting. He's like, Oh damn, like let, let's go. So yeah, no, that it's, was, it's not Marotech. Oh, awesome. It's just regular old, you know, U S army. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I, I like that they look like rail gun and beam blasters though. Like the guns don't look yeah. like conventional, like, you know, machine yeah. guns. They look like, like energy weapons and stuff like that. So that's yeah. pretty cool. And I like yeah. him saving the pilots when the ship that one of the helicopters blows up, he saves them the gravity powers. Like Marshall is being a lot less like pig headed than I thought he would be mm. doing this. Mm. Very surprising. Yes. Very surprising. The, I, I exactly. thought these roles were gonna be complete right. Opposite. I don't know right? we'll about later, but yeah. I feel like yeah. every 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 chance he had a choice to do it on his own or ask for help, he has asked for help and taken the help. Mm-hmm. he took the he wants to prove nathan wrong too because remember in existence like he thought what you can't do this to me like he's he's got, yeah. he's like no i know what people think about me i i and i'm gonna prove them wrong and i like that yeah he did call yeah, it, 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 and it's interesting <laughs> yeah yeah prove them wrong about like not going off the edge kind of right like yeah because like sometimes yeah like when you want to prove someone wrong and i think that's what's happening a little bit with nathan like you can go kind of too far over that edge and into that, but yeah, it's uh, don't want to get too much into that, but yeah, um, I, I, it was cool seeing Kieran in here and uh, like mm-hmm. like Bash's name states, uh, he's he, he's a little more than a uh, than a postman for sure. So, yeah, it's great to see him. <laughs> Kieran's like 
Kieran, uh, my, here's my crazy theory. He could be like Marshall's like alternate, like his brother if he got a government job. It's like alternate Marshall from another oh, timeline yeah. that he crammed in there. Yeah. He looks a lot like him with the eye scar, and I don't know. It's just Kieran's joke, like uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Men in Black. That's what he reminds me. Yeah, of, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. just like very serious, but also very funny at the same time. This yeah. is great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I can't wait to see if he actually like maybe he has a mech suit or something. Like if shit goes real south, Ooh. like maybe Karen has a, a a little trick or a little suit up his sleeve. Who knows? That's Man's very... like, I think you pointed out he's too casual with the T. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he yeah he must have or probably like I don't know like a suit. Like if he gets hit, he probably has like some like Rick Sanchez kind of like setup going. Where <laughs> he's good or like I I can picture him with like at least like a beam rifle or some of the double O one mm. tech. That would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, given all the things they've seized from those guys uh, from the beginning of the book, uh, mm. Jason, Jason, those other guys, Riley and those guys, I think, yeah, they should have some beautiful tech. But yeah, this next page, we get a big change in the tide of the battle because we get this ginormous, massive Godzilla-sized like robot that just crashes down and has these sophisticated weapons. He's just shooting like, these like little detonating balls, yeah. right? Like the Lord of the Rings orcs or something. Like these are the big guys in the army that it can really do some like widespread damage. Mm -hmm. Like it almost like the, the grill of a car when it's like bent over. It's really it's the design is really sleek. Like Morrow's taking notes right now on like how to like make <laughs> things even worse for people in in San Diego or uh, wherever. So it's like when Volley Bear just pops out of the jungle, pulls level <laughs> six, right, and puts yeah. on his like electric arms and just like. <laughs> no, yeah. this is a, an amazing page. Again, the panels of the composition, everything, Radiant Black just flying, the glow, everything visually is gorgeous. It's perfect. It's one of the cleanest comic series of all time. Everything is just so well organized and thought out. And there's like not a line out of out of order. And he's well calling Nathan too. Like we said, mm -hmm. he's asking for help. And he, he, Siri, call Nathan. Even Apple's helping out in this battle. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah. I love how it's just Siri. Like he's got all this fancy tech, but he's just still using his, his phone. Uh, no, it's, yeah. it's great. Um and yeah, I like no, that he I, takes I'll, it. He takes it on on his own. He calls dibs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, which he does, and also kind of uh, like skip, skipping to the next page here when we see him kind of putting this force field around this um, around the robot. I guess it's exploding, right? Or it's like self destructing. It's it's mm -hmm. it's launching off. the bombs, and they have nowhere to go. So yeah, it's accidentally no. self. So he's kind of put it in. I I love how the dark energy. You kind of get the dark energy around Marshall as he goes Kate mode there. Um, and mm -hmm. you kind of get the eyes like he like he did have going uh, like dark mode. Um, so I, I, I think it's kind of cool. He's on that edge. And as we see with Nathan, it doesn't exactly look like that. Um, so, yeah, I, this sequence was was pretty interesting for sure. And uh, what do you guys think of uh, Nathan's Nathan's tips uh, from, from behind the scenes? He's a, he's a pretty smart guy. He's a writer, but yeah, you know, he knows some things. He knows some things. Nathan's school of win this because he really came in there. With, no, <laughs> no, but really, like this was cool. And he's a writer. He knows stuff. As we saw, he says in this issue, I'm a writer. I know st I know weird stuff. And, you know, that's a lot of like that's Kyle. Like, that's just like straight up. Like, you know, as a writer, you, you've you hear weird stuff and you tuck that away like oh that's something that's not in the public consciousness that i can use in the story and this this mm. is one of those things it's just amazing and it shows the teamwork it's nathan is super heroic without the radiant he doesn't need it to do hero heroic acts mm -hmm. true nathan's creative he's a good ally as well to have on the battlefield like he doesn't necessarily he could be intel he could be like oracle for example he's yeah. just a useful person to have on the, on the line even just as a friend and that's why we see here like look at this panel is so simple ah Okay, sorry. This panel right here is so simple. It's just Radiant Black looking, but it just reminds me a lot of like the Spider-Man moments where he's in shock and he's like, it's very well illustrated. It's just perfect. Um, this is one of my favorite, like just Radiant Black panels ever right here with the yeah. cape mode and him just full on like, yeah, pissed off, trying to trap him in a bubble, in the gravitational bubble. As we see in the next thing, it says he's breaking through the armor. That's where Nathan tells him, like you said, keep pouring it on, you're pressure cooking it. And Marshall's like, what? And he's like, you know, I'm a writer. I know weird stuff. <laughs> so that's the joke Charlie made earlier, obviously. This is such a great line. This one made me like cack out loud. The speech bubble is black now too. Like the, the Kate mm -hmm. mode's taken over or the rage mode's taken over or something like that. So mm -hmm. I like that he's using the rage for a good purpose. He's using that anger to like keep everything locked down. So it's kind of mm -hmm. nice that they're both using their strengths here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so he managed to actually defeat the robot, but couldn't contain the explosion, unfortunately, but managed to bubble himself and Nathan. So they're safe. And uh, that's where we see in the next issue. And again, we're going to stop sharing a bit. 
we see that the robot's taken down and we're in the final page to uh like this is the final page right after of the issue of 26 where we see that he's talking to kieran and kieran says so they're just testing you and we're just the collateral and that's where marshall responds and says it's more complicated than that all the tech comes from them the radiants come from them we were never supposed to have anything to do with it but now we're caught in something bigger and he says, I can do this. I can pass their tests. I can save the world. And Karen says, and if you don't, we all die. And he says, I'm trying not to focus on that part. I, I thought this was really weird when he says, sigh. And he's like, no one above me is going to be happy about anything you just said. And no one's highlighted in bold. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. I'm not, that one got me thinking like so much. I'm like, what is he trying to say? Is no one like, is, what, what the fuck? Like, so I have no idea. I think this is just a misdirect. I think it just means like he's just trying to be ambiguous about how he's saying it. And he just means nobody. But like, if it was no one, that'd be pretty fucking cool too. I'm just saying, it is the Massiverse book. God, God, God. <laughs> I'm saying, but that was really cool. That that was that got me thinking, like genuinely. And I just hmm. want to say, the next issue is called Accretion. The title, obviously, when you're accreting, you're accumulating because you're not obviously. Away. I had to Google that word. I didn't know that word until today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. So yeah, Accretion. Um, uh, if that's the title of the next it thing. has layers right it's like adding more mm -hmm. layers to it so i guess it's the uh the war games are going to get more complicated is my assumption mm -hmm. yeah i think they're going to try to accumulate power on both sides and it's going to be curious to see how that plays out but and accumulated power can mean different things right maybe he's just getting allies or maybe he's going to try to literally empower himself maybe access the dark mode again that the full-on dark mode who knows all i know is this was a crazy first issue fantastic we really loved it and now we're gonna we're not even taking any breaks, nothing. We're diving right into twenty six point five. So let's start off by saying, there you go. Basically. Let's start off by saying, yeah. So here it is. Here's twenty six point five. We got it in the flesh, as you can see here on the right. It says twenty six point five. If you look up to the middle of, so up to, you know, approximately this, pretty much this page right here. Up to this page where we get the uh, you know the ball stack pov this is the it's all the same book up until this page and different, then after a little that bit different dialogue mildly different yeah. decisions but like the framing is very similar yeah i think that yeah. the one the, the biggest key difference is that nathan didn't take marshall with him to meet yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah which was interesting okay. yeah and we, we already mentioned that so we covered our base there but yeah good 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 call we nathan doesn't take marshall with him marshall uh, when it comes to decision to go, the, when the decision comes to go talk to Premier and deal with the the trials, Nathan doesn't take Marshall with him. Nathan is hell bent on doing it on his own. So as we can see in the pages after that, what really changes overall is that Nathan takes a little bit longer to actually make his decisions. We see that immediately when he has to evacuate the area because the first trial has begun, which is the assault of the robots. He takes a minute to figure out the battle zone, and he does this by dropping the guys off to safety. So Nathan, uh, sorry, Marshall and 001, they're dropped off to the side. He's just like, take care of him. So they teleport out of the beach and then on the sand. That's kind of careless, right? Did you guys not think he was a little me. careless? Yep. Just dropped him. Yep. Yeah. I thought I thought it was a little careless, but, but I guess 001 reassured him. He's like, don't worry about us. But Nathan then, I think this part's smart where he decides to take – like the robots head on and lead them away from the city. The thing is, because everything is done impulsively, you can see that it's not fully thought out. So yeah, he does the same thing as Marshall in the sense that he's doing a lot of damage. I really like here where he once he takes them out to the water side, he tries to take I all love. the robots. Yeah, he takes that all the robots underwater. And you see this like gorgeous page where as they're underwater, everything gets really dark around him, and you can see the radiant in the middle of his chest glowing. Those are just gorgeous pages. Love to see that kind of difference. And then we see he lights them all up with the gravitational powers and just like drowns them. Like just uses the pressure of the water to to like you know destroy like them. Because gravity's mm -hmm. already magnified the lower mm -hmm. you go in the water. So like I thought that's pretty clever. That's something that's a writer brain kind of move yep yeah uh, so i thought that was really cool i think the mistake is when you see him take them to like an, what looks like an oil or like you know some sort of like gas factory so yeah. they take them to this factory right and there's all these like chemicals and really hot things like lava looking shit so and then he takes he goes to molten metal so he puts he just takes like bits of like molt molten like lava and like metallicizes them a little bit with his the bath gravity bombs of death. 
You put this in yep. your bath, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he uses them to like headshot the robots, which was really cool, showing that he this was my think favorite. Better. In both mm-hmm. issues, this is my favorite thing they did with the liquid hot magma. No, it was really mm-hmm. sweet, really clever. I'm like, that's clean. Also, it kind of reminds me of Freddy's Boiler Room from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street a little bit, which I like. But yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very and, cool. And yeah, I guess like while this is all going on too, like we'll we'll see the repercussions later. But kind of the like the biggest twist in this issue for me was uh they're in danger and and marshall wants to call the other radiance and nathan says no i'm gonna do this on my own so eva yeah obviously eva doesn't come in and uh yeah um we don't uh, don't have anyone to go save save the day for for a lot of other people so yeah that, that was mm-hmm. kind of interesting you, you, you could you could say okay he's trying to lead them away so he might not need anyone else but um whereas marshall kind of fought more in a populated area um, but yeah. I, I just I found it super interesting how this whole time, like Nathan's just like, OK, I'm going to do this by myself. I'm going to do this by myself. Um, but the more I thought about it, I'm thinking like how Nathan missed so much of this mm-hmm. whole radiant fiasco. He doesn't know these other exactly. people as well. He doesn't exactly. he hasn't been through this stuff. He hasn't like, he hasn't trained he hasn't as long. Zero, zero, he hasn't one. been radiant black as long. It's yeah, not his fault. He doesn't know any of the radiance. He just doesn't. The old, yes. Probably the, the one he knows best is probably Wendell. Or Wendell. Satomi, who tried to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Satomi yeah. knows a little bit. And that's why, yeah. and, and I was thinking too, like, okay, like 001, he should have been training them since, since like he should have warned mm-hmm. them sooner and been training them. Like he, he just kind of did that now. But if you think about it, he's been, he could have been kind of doing it the whole time kind of harshly, but yeah, he kind of took it away from them. He took nathan or marshall through existence so he's kind of he's been training marshall more for this kind of whole thing going forward so i uh, yeah i just think nathan kind of has a whole different perspective on this thing i like you highlighted the friendship element because like marshall if that's the right timeline where he wins the robots all seem like they have to submit it's like one hive mind kind of consciousness whereas Mm -hmm. if it's friends outside forces could be like hey help people that don't aren't exactly all like you and you can it's even better life is even better right uh, so it's weird that narrative could be really dominant and it'd be hard to see a timeline where nathan is the right pick even though this episode this issue really sold me on nathan as reading black well well let's see this right because here he, we see that a source of controversy for the past few issues with cape mode and here nathan is easily wielding wielding cape mode and he takes the robots he destroyed and uses the same trick he used earlier which is he turns them into like magnetic lava balls launches them and then is able to more easily more easily than marshall kill the big robot but the thing is we can see here because the destruction is huge and it's in the same place that he took the factory the destruction is not simply contained to the area because as we can see, though he meets up with Karen in the next page and he asks Kieran for help and, you know, the, the, or Karen tells him he wants to help, but he says, no, I want to do it all my, on my own. You can see here that the same family that we saw in 26 initially that was saved by Radiant Black is now dead. So there was a cost to his decisions. And that's just the families that, that's dead that we see. Perhaps there are more that yeah. even died. So that's, that's what Karen said. You're not going to make the right decision. You're not going to always make the right decision. But yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I have a. He tells him this is war, about. right? He says this is, is war. You're is. not always gonna. Well, do you think Kieran is like maybe like some a- agent of existence who's manipulating? No, <laughs> no, no, no. You're no, you're going to simple hat right now. It, here's here's my theory, hat. real quick. I wanna, I wanna get you guys' opinion on it. Mm. Remember Wendell? And I forgot what issue it was, but when they were fighting the, uh, the Fab Five or whatever they were called, mm-hmm. and. Nathan told him that we saved Marshall. You know, Marshall is alive. He said, "Oh my God, this is going to be the end of us all." Right? Yeah. There was yeah. some something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. My my prediction is in the Nathan timeline, we win the ultimate war, we beat Premier, but we lose a lot of lives on the way. But like ultimately, Earth is going to survive. Maybe in the Marshall timeline, yeah, he might be helping people, but he might lose the war at the end. Okay, mm-hmm. not win the premiership or whatever, or win the cat. I like that theory. I think that's yeah, really that's, cool. That's true. Yeah. The, yeah, that's true. But uh, now you could go the other way, saying Nathan doesn't want any help. Marshall has the help. He he might have access to the four radians. Maybe he'll make he'll be able to make the Megazord, whereas Nathan <laughs> won't be able to. You know, like I don't, mm-hmm. yeah. 
What, what about Power Radiant Friendship. Black 18, though? What about Radiant Black 18? One of the timelines we see a grown-up Ori and an old man Wendell on a decimated universe. What are the odds that one of those realities in the future comes into play in one of these? Might be. Uh, if I had to guess, it'll, if, if I go by yeah. my theory, it'd probably be the Marshall timeline. That's what I would think, too, based on your theory. I like that theory a lot. I like yeah. the idea of ending the series in, like, two separate timelines. Like, what if we never stop doing the split issues? <laughs> or what if we, like, revisit the timeline? Well, I mean, obviously, that'd be hell for, for a lot of people. But yeah. I, I, I like that really... re- revisiting the timelines sounds plausible. Sounds doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. I, th- I think that's very possible. And and I think it's cool we see Nathan finally go in, in Kate mode this issue. I I kind of questioned it. I, I don't know if it's because I've just been playing too much Spider-Man, but I, I did get a lot of symbiote Spider-Man vibes from Nathan. Um, this whole issue, just wanting to do things by himself, shoving people away. Um, and then yeah and then Mm -hmm. here we see him we see him kind of come in and and i'm wondering now is he kind of like now that he's kind of in this state and i don't know he's kind of doing things on his own he's able to tap into these powers a little more easier um i'm just wondering if emotion really has anything to do with the powers and if the more power he gets, is he going to be able to handle that power like Marshall is? Yes. Like, is he going to be able to go into dark mode and be able to come back from dark mode? Uh, yeah. Whereas Nate, uh, whereas Marshall can do that because he's used to those emotions a little more. Okay, okay, wait, wait. wait. Here's, here's the theory that ties previous theories we've had with new theories, okay? So what <laughs> if, what if ultimately... What we said earlier is somewhat true that the 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 person who is premier is kind of taken over by the program or whatever the protocol is. And what if the protocol is looking for a new worthy host and then Nathan ends up winning and becoming said host and becomes premier? Ooh. Like that would that would that would be pretty cool yeah. because like because yeah. you turn evil. <laughs> like we've said it before. We're like Nathan Bo like sketchy, but it's it's so hard to tell. I think part of this also, I want to give credit to Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark is that they're writing such complexity in terms of uh, emotional complexity. So it's really hard to tell, like it's still on the edge in my opinion, where we could see either of them go either way. But I do agree with Charlie, what he said earlier was, was like, I really was surprised by how each was handled because Mm -hmm. I expected a bit of differences on each side, but I really like that our, like within reason and it made sense. Our expectations were like completely shattered and like we saw something completely different. I thought that was brilliant. So I can't wait to see how this plays out. I do want to highlight one or two important things that I'm pretty sure you guys have thought about, but none of us have brought up yet, which is, yes, there's Radiant Pink in this issue. Yes, there's other Radiants to ask. Who's the next Radiant that's going to make an appearance? I think in one of the issues 29, the covers, we see yellow. We see like part of yellow, but it looks kind of orange. So A, my question to you is, which Radiant is going to be the next to appear? B in first. I don't care which issue. But which rating is going to be the next to appear first if you think they're going to appear? And then B, I've seen a lot of discussion recently on the forums and on other places of different colored radiants altogether. I I'm, I think Kyle said before that this is it in terms of the radiance, but you know, with Kyle, you never say never. He also said we we're going to get the result of the vote before. He said Kyle said a lot of things, baby. You know, so uh, so we'll see what really happens. But do you guys think that? So my first question is, who's the next radiant that's going to show up? And my second question is, do you think there's more radiance? Mm. I, I think Red's showing up next. I think a prison smashes the side of a prison and bam, we have her back. Right? Like, I think it's, <laughs> we need Satomi. Like Satomi would turn the tide of this stuff. Like she would just absorb the explosions of that big mech and then just beat its ass right there. Like mm-hmm. Satomi, I think is next because w- uh, Wendell's harder to get out of existence. I think. Do you think they're going to work the Kieran angle to get Satomi? Mm, smart. I think that's. Or, I mean, or she could just bust right out. I mean, but but like if she punches just, out, there's there's baggage, right? But yeah. if they tell Kieran to like, you, you could like have Kieran out, to kind of work yeah. it back after. Like yeah, if yeah. she breaks out, you could kind of so some Amanda Shitter. Waller yeah. shit, bro. Some Waller yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me. I'm building a squad. You know, <laughs> she's but. been doing penance for this, right? Like she accepts her crime right. and she's going to prison. She could have got out. Do that, and she might even go back after. Like, all right, cool, you did your thing. The guy. All right, cool, you did your thing. The guy. Red's next. Okay. On, on Bash's point, with with just oh, okay. yeah, I, just oh, okay. yeah, I, me. He says they're testing me, and like me is high. Testing me, and like me is high. Or whatever. So, at least for Nathan, the way he thinks about it, it's on him. It's not. Thinks about it, it's on him. It's not. Like Hal Jordan, like post, like the city getting. 
post like the city getting dead. edge yeah. bro he, ju- he just needs like some like what's gonna like some like what's gonna because i think i think we saw uh, a foreshadowing of that at the end when karen doing of that at the end when karen so it's like what happens next issue when they show him like this is the when they show him like this is the you did good, son. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, well, Marshall, like... Marshall's already experienced. Marshall's already experienced. Can kind of just never really experienced. Never really experienced. He was he did, like relies on his parents a lot too. He had that background. He has that comfort zone. Like mm-hmm. he background. He has that comfort zone. Like believable i feel like one good speech like one bowl of oatmeal share between the two of them and he can bring him back from from, from your hood yeah. like legitimately though like i joke but i do think his dad's a really important influence that we saw early on mm. even while he was back home living with them so i don't know it's interesting also uh, just mm. before we get to the next question i did i really liked how they showed the difference between the two right because like nathan has those big writer ideas that are harder to accomplish like kyle himself has these massive ideas that are amazing but harder to accomplish whereas the smaller scale of things that marshall was doing is like okay well i know this person i can do this let me call this i know i can confirm this and we can do this and get it done like smaller scale like business ideas or whatever he's made the smaller things not the big swings like moving to la he's done smaller things home around home and he understands that kind of stuff so i really like the juxtaposition i think is really well done okay i have, I have such a good question for you guys so one can argue and i think it's a very valid argument that existence in itself has been a trial of sorts and, and on the multiple occasions that we've been there what are the odds or what are the chances you guys think that one of the trials will be in existence or or something like that good question 80 percent. i think it's super likely what about you it might be the last Dude, I, I want to see a space battle up like, there. I want to see like the final battle be like somewhere in existence where they just in like that throwing spiral, moves at each other dude, in that spiral, dude. In that trippy <laughs> spiral. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. just light, like just colors are fading oh, and yeah. shit. They, they punch <laughs> each other and like colors just start to like just oh. leak and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just I want to yeah. see craziness, man. Just final battle takes place within because Costa blows out like both wrists trying to give us existence, like an existence war. Like, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely think that's pretty likely for sure. Um, oh and yeah, like I, I also, um, one little, little hint I noticed um, is in the in the Marshall issue, the first issue, uh, the first thing zero zero one says to Marshall is, "I hope you made the right decision for everyone's sake." That's what he says to Nathan, and then in the in the Nate or in the Nathan Radiant Black issue um zero zero one says to nathan he says nathan you must be ready and then nathan kind of just bolts off before like everyone's sake so in marshall's he definitely everyone's sake he definitely he definitely saved them mm. i just thought that was kind of interesting that um mm. he kind of like yes. nathan he, he he's just he's just kind of doing things he's, he's doing things as marshall would when he first got the radio yeah um it's yeah no it's it's uh it's definitely interesting for sure but uh mm. it's yeah it's cool that's a good point i really want to see I mean, like uh, how marshall like really embraces his destiny like you know what i mean i really hope that like he he means what he says before that like this he could really make a difference it's, it's like Marshall has really nothing going for him, like compared to Nathan, who I think has has something going for him at least as as, as like as, as a civilian beyond the rating black thing. Right, right. Yeah, I like the line with 001 in the uh, 26A where uh, it's when they're talking with Premier and uh, Marshall's rating black and Nathan's there, and 001 goes, "Not misdirection, new direction." Right, because this is a new timeline. Yeah, this is the yeah. this is new ground. So it is the, mm-hmm. this is the different timeline where something changed because Marshall was supposed mm-hmm. to die or it looked that way. So. A is the most volatile, like different timeline, and maybe the Nathan timeline is what we're trying to avoid. Or, but he, he was also uh, saying like the colossals translate for them, so it's like that yeah. shows, I think, a little bit of a bond between the colossal and Nathan or Marshall, yeah. respectively, and like how he's been tra- or they've been translating for them. But I also think it shows how powerful Premier is by the fact that he could literally just interrupt their translations and or just like <laughs> yeah. stop them from just stop the colossals from being useful, pretty much because. I don't know if you guys noticed this. It was very quick, but I thought it was so important. Right after, like, the Colossal had that little, like, spat with the robot, I think at 26, it says that, uh, like, the robot felt pain, like, as they were yeah, going. Yes, like, yes, yeah. They were, like, the yes. robot is, like, hurt. I think the robot's, like, hurting. And I'm just, like, oh, shit. Like, okay. Like, this Premier guy is literally just, like, that powerful. You know what I mean? So, I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was very interesting that just that little encounter, like, the robot's already, like, 
you know, a lot of pain. That was, that was big. So I'm curious, I'm curious what that really means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's a lot actually, of- a, a, a question I, I want to ask you guys, um, it's kind of went a little more early in the series, mm-hmm. but, um, this last name we've been dealing with Mar- Mr. Ward, uh, Marshall Ward, um, it does say it. I don't know. I believe this is the first time I remember it saying it in the book itself. Um, but, but the, the robot actually says it like his catalyst says mm. it catalyst is decide permanent terms have been agreed. Marshall Ward will be challenged. Um, do you guys think this meet that name means anything anymore? Or was it just something that kind of, there was never really a need for a last name. The first bunch of issues. Doesn't Ward mean like that's actually a good on? question? Yeah, but I've heard it's also a reference to Burt Ward. But you're right; like that doesn't mean it couldn't be ambiguous and be both. I think that's actually an excellent question. I'm curious to hear what everyone says. It's it it's seems to be a big thing. It it did seem to be a big thing, but I, I wasn't sure. Even the last name itself has you questioning things, right? Because like obviously, I, I thought Burt Ward as well. It's but like Ward is like a dependable, but also Burt Ward played Robin, right? Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yes. Robin that's, is like the why. second fiddle, right? Well, like like then, the then why tier. was it such a secret? You know, like it's it was so like hidden for such a long time. And but yeah, yeah maybe there just wasn't a use for it. But yeah, it was just kind of weird. We knew Nathan's for so long. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. If, if uh, you guys have any thoughts as the listeners, definitely send that in too. Um, yeah, I think to it's just YouTube. so we know yeah, whatever. we know what it means when Kieran Ward is revealed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have one last question. I, th- I think it's a good question to end on. It does look like it. Stuff. Dude, sorry. Mm-hmm. I thought that was him when he pulled up. I, I actually thought it was Marshall with a they scar. They look similar. They do look similar. <laughs> I, like I it could like, be. Is that... So, uh, okay. I, yeah, I, I won't put it. Like, like Marshall. <laughs> Marshall gets injured in one timeline, gets a scar on his eye, and then somehow and finds a way into another timeline. This guy has such like a secret job, he couldn't actually stay and live with Marshall. Like he, he, like he kind of had a job that kind of took more more responsibilities than that. He had to keep a secret. He was a secret agent. He's you know, drinking the tea yeah. more massively than I. Like as if he'd actually <laughs> seen what has happened before. That's why he's so calm because he's already seen it. And he's got the eye. I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> I think that's interesting. We don't know anything about Kieran. He could just be our Cecil. But I do think there's some interesting stuff that could happen. You never know. Mm. Yeah. What was your mm. question? Well, my question is obviously, and this is a minor spoiler for Rogue Sun 16. So if you haven't read that, skip the next 15 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. My question is in Rogue Sun recently, we saw as shit got really serious, one of the plans was to take the villains out and use them in a, in a sense to help in a sense. And I won't spoil how that is, of course. Do you think it's possible that some of the villains in the Radiant Black are going to be utilized such as... Um, uh doppler or shift for example because as we've seen doppler's allegiance was was gray at best last time we saw her she was having second thoughts and then shift despite being a bit of a coward and selling all those weapons i think he has a vested interest in everything that's going on so what do you guys think any chance we see those guys come out or is this purely a a cosmic all-out brawl doppler could be really useful to interfere with communication between the robots right like i think doppler is one to watch for sure Mm. Uh, I kind of cheated and uh, looked at some of the future covers, so I, I think oh. they they definitely will show on issue twenty nine at least because twenty nine point five you can see all of them. Mm. Uh, Mecha shift the mm. yes baby guy. I don't remember their names. Okay, well. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I hope so. So yes baby guy. Oh, that's that's, that's yeah. my name. Yeah. Oh baby, yes, baby oh, guy. Baby. <laughs> cheer, oh, cheer, cheer, and cheer. I, I, Excel. Right there we go. So you're like the cringiest man in comics. Like, yeah, that's gonna be. I yeah. So obviously, sport it looks like it is gonna happen. But yeah, I think Doppler's one to what, watch. What, what, you're considering. No, no, I see them, but you're considering the possibility they're gonna help. What is also the possibility that Premier is going to manipulate them into helping him with some sort of promise of power? Oh, that's Shit, entirely yeah. possible. Uh, they, yeah, I don't know. That's entirely possible yeah. too. Well, but here's the thing. Look at look at issue 27, 27.5. Hmm. There's different figures in the foreground, right? That's not the same person in each cover. But the one yep. on cover A looks like Shift with his hood down. These guys, I think, are new. I, I could be wrong, but I think these are going to be like the rest I mean, of the series one through. Yeah, like yeah. 002, oh, 003. Yeah, like, yeah. That's what, that's oh, what I think these cool. guys are. Because cool. yeah. all the people they're fighting look like 001. Like the, the dark yeah. figures in the background, those all look like 001. Teenage Mutant Barcode guys. Teenage, like, like also, what are they gonna be? 
Speaking of a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles writer, uh, I did think it was interesting that we mentioned the aviary is what the Air Force was called, or like the airstrike. Oh, yeah, called, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a nice little Easter egg, I think, as a little mm-hmm. reference to Rogue, for Rogue Sun Vans and stuff. I thought that mm-hmm. was cool. I wanted to mention that. No, that's that's a good one. Yeah, I love that. I noticed that as well. I I I was I kept like looking for reasons to, for these things to be like double meanings, like oh, is this like the no one connection or like the rogue son? But I guess we'll know when we know. I don't think we'll see like those guys in this book in Catalyst War because that would dis like that would go against the things they've said in terms of the rules for the books and everything. But either way, it'd be cool. Like either way. Yeah. Anyways, I think that's a good place to end it on, ladies and gentlemen. How good it is to be returning, to be uh, discussing Radiant Black. How good it feels to be here with all of you. Of course, we're always open to um, your questions. Make sure you send us your questions, your comments, all that good stuff. Make sure you follow us everywhere at Radiant Black Podcast. We're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter or X or whatever you're calling it. The crappy app now. Um, yeah, so we're, we're everywhere. Come come, you know, chat with us. Check us out. We're also the Rogue Sun podcast where we talk about all things Rogue Sun. And we just got a shining endorsement from Ryan Parrott, of which we are trademarked by Matt uh, Parrott Heads. So there you go. Um, yeah, the next we, the next issue right now is slated for, God, it says December 13th. But again, this is all up in the air because there's been a lot of delays recently. So no, I, you know, I'm not guaranteeing that. Don't for promise sure. it to your kids for Hanukkah. Yep. You don't know for sure. If you can give it <laughs> Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. That's all we can do. Yeah. But yeah, yep. either way, like there was a lot of bad. I just want to say there was a lot of baggage. And I, you know, as creators, it sucks if it's like tainting Michael and Kyle and everyone's day. If it's like, this should be a big day for them. We're releasing like a really awesome, like double issue. But, you know, the baggage overwhelmed it. But at the end of the day, in the future, this won't matter too much because you can just get the collected issues and just enjoy really impressive storytelling, really amazing stuff. And I, I'm just glad. I'm glad we have it. I'm glad that they're still making these books that are fantastic that, you know, brought us all together, has a great community mm-hmm. going. And I'm really thankful and I'm glad. And I know this is, be a, is a stressful time for these, for the team. And, uh, you know, I just hope it goes over smoothly. I got my money's worth. Like I'm, I'm like really happy with how everything went in terms of like, I feel like even though I paid like eight bucks, like $4 for each issue, I feel like each issue was different enough to where it was just genuinely different. We had so much to talk about. Like this episode was really long and we could honestly go on longer, but we want to be <laughs> mindful of not making it like a two hour show. Yeah. So but yeah, it, it, excellent um, return to Catalyst War. Really hoping that the future uh, issues will release on time or at least within the realm of reason instead and not three months apart. I want to say that if you're a fan of Kyle Higgins, Joe Clark's work, they're also working on Deep Cuts, which is one of the best books, in my opinion, that slipped under the radar almost completely. It's a book about jazz music, just to put it lightly, because each, each issue features like a different character and just a different story. So it's like an anthology, I guess you could say in that sense. Um, the themes Igor. are the same. Got Igor. It's all you need. Oh, oh there you go. Igor, exactly. So check it out, don't, guys. Don't make it a deep cut. Pick up your copies now, right? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Joe Clark's great. I love it whenever he, I've only read his massive first stuff, but like it, you know, it's the only ad you need. So definitely check out Deep Cuts. There you go. And obviously, we'll be back soon with reviews for, uh, well, the next time you'll see us, we'll probably be doing a review for Rogue Sun, but we will honestly get to the fan cast very soon at some point. So there's that to look forward to as well. Uh, in terms of the next issue, that's whenever Rain Black 27, 27.5 released. Again, hopefully they don't delay it. But I think that's covered pretty much everything. Please like and subscribe. Drop us a review if you can. That really helps us uh, you know, reach others and helps us keep uh, making amazing content for Radiant Black. Anyways, mm-hmm. thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. We'll see you next time for the rest of the Catalyst War, where things get even crazier. Catalyst War, where things get even crazier. Stay ready. Existence.